All right, hi guys. Here to read Flat Stanley, his orig original adventure, and we are in chapter two now. I might flip through chapter one to remind you what was happening. All right, chapter two, being flat. When Stanley got used to being flat, he enjoyed it. He could go in and out of rooms, even when the door was closed, just by lying down and sliding through the clack, cl crack at the bottom. Mr. and Mrs. Lambchop said it was silly. Oh, sorry. But they were quite proud of him. Arthur got jealous and tried to slide. Under a door, but he just banged his head. Being flat could also be helpful, Stanley found. He was talking, or he was taking a walk with Mrs. Lambchop one afternoon when she, when her favorite ring fell from her finger, the ring rolled across the sidewalk and down between the bars of, of a grating that covered a deep, dark shaft. Mrs. Lambchop began to cry. I have an idea, Stanley said. He took the laces out of his shoes and an extra pair out of his pocket and tied them all together to make one long lace. Then he tied one end of that to the back of his belt and gave the other end to his mother. Lower me, he said. I will look for the ring. Thank you, Stanley, Mrs. Lamb Chop said. He lowered him, or she lowered him between the bars and moved him carefully up and down and from side to side so that he could search the whole floor of the shaft. Two policemen came by and stared at Mrs. Lamb Chop as she stood holding the long lace that ran down through the grating. She pretended not to notice them. What's the matter, lady? The first policeman asked. Is your yo-yo stuck? I'm not playing with, my, with a yo-yo, Mrs. Lambchop said sharply. My son is at the other end of this lace, if you must know. Get the net, Harry, said the second policeman. We have caught a cuckoo. Just then, down in the shaft, Stanley cried out, Hooray! Mrs. Lambchop pulled him up and saw that he had the ring. Good for you, Stanley, she said. Uh, then she turned angrily to the policeman. A cuckoo indeed, she said. Shame. The policeman apologized. We didn't get it, lady, they said. We have been, uh, we have been hasty. We see that now. People should think twice before being rude, making rude remarks, said Mrs. Lambchop, and then not make them at all. The policeman realized that was a good rule and said they would try to remember it. One day, Stanley got a letter from his friend, Thomas Anthony Jeffrey, whose family had moved recently to California. A school vacation was about to begin, and Stanley was invited to spend it with the Jeffreys. Oh, boy, Stanley said. I would love to go. Mr. Lambchop sighed. A round-trip train or plane ticket to California is very expensive, he said. I will have to think of some cheaper way. When Mr. Lambchop came home from the office that evening, he brought with him an enormous brown paper envelope. Mr. 
the the envelope had to be folded to fit through the slot, but Stanley was a limber boy, and inside the box he straightened right up again. Mr. Lambchop was nervous because Stanley had never been away from home alone before. She rapped on the box. Can you hear me, dear? She called. Are you all right? Stanley's voice came quite clearly. I'm fine. Can I get my sandwich now? Wait an hour and try not to get overheated, dear, Mrs. Lambchop, sa Lambchop said. Then she and Mr. Lambchop cried out, goodbye, goodbye, and went home. Stanley had a fine time in California. When the visit was over, the Jeffreys returned him in a beautiful white envelope they had made themselves. It had red and blue markings to show what it was, or show that it was air mail, and Thomas Jeffrey had lettered it valuable and fragile, and this end up on both sides. Back home, Stanley told his family that he had been handled so carefully he never felt a single bump. Mr. Lambchop said it proved that jet planes were wonderful, and so was the postal service, and that is, er, and that this was a great age in which we live. Stanley thought so too. Chapter two of Flat Stanley. The end.